All right, everybody's asking me about personal conveyance, so we gotta talk about it. What is personal conveyance? PC. Personal conveyance is a thing that we have in our Samsara that we can use as off-duty driving. It's not to bother yourself down the road. Um, had somebody call in last week and said they got pulled over by DOT. They ran out of hours and they were PC and on up to the next place. You cannot use PC to go further out to a destination. So if you run out of hours, legally, what you should do, if there's nowhere to park, you have to run out of your hours, you go over your hours, and you put note on there and the remarks, go into the next safe haven and park. You can't use that for PC. Let me read you what the guidelines say real quick about when you can use PC. Separate uses for a CMV while off-duty for personal conveyance. The following are examples of appropriate uses of a CMV while off-duty for personal conveyance include, but not limited to. Number one, time spent traveling from a driver's in-route lodging, such as a motel or truck stop, to restaurants and entertainment facilities. Number two, commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence between trailer drop lots and the driver resident and between work sites and his or her residence. In these scenarios, the commuting distance combined with the release from work and start to work must allow the driver enough time to obtain the required rest to ensure the driver is not fatigued. Number three, time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to obtain required rest after loading or unloading. The time driving under personal advance must allow the driver adequate time to attain the required rest in accordance with the minimum off-duty periods under 49. Before returning on-duty driving and the resting location must be the first such location reasonable available. Moving a CMV at the request of a safety official during the driver's off-duty time. Time spent traveling into a motor coach without passengers or en route lodging such as motel or truck stop or to restaurants, entertainment facilities, back to lodging. In this scenario, the driver of the motor coach can claim personal conveyance provided the driver is off duty. Other off duty drivers may onboard a vehicle and are not considered passengers. Time spent transporting personal property while off duty authorized use the CMD to travel home after work at the off site location. So those are the reasons why. So you can't be at mile marker 10 and say, hey, I'm going to run down here to the uh, another 25 miles on personal advance. You cannot further your load. You're not supposed to do that. If you use personal advance, you have to go back to where you started from. The only exception is if you're getting unloaded or unloaded, like I am right now and I run out of time, I'm allowed to PC to the first off duty because I'm already on my break. I'm out of hours and they allow that. Uh, also, let's go over a few questions. Let's maybe not a few questions, but let's read here what they say when it's not a good time to use it. Let's check it out. All right, it says examples of uses of a CMV that would not qualify as personal advance. Number one, the movement of a CMV in order to enhance the operational readiness of a motor carrier. For example, bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or the scheduled motor carrier destination. Like I was saying, you can't go further your thing. After delivering or towed unit and the towing unit no longer meets the definition of a CMV, the driver turns to a point of urgent under the direction of the motor carrier to pick up another towed unit. Number three, continuation of a CMV trip in an interstate commerce in order to fulfill a business purpose including bobtailing or operating with an empty trailer in order to retrieve another loaded reposition of a CMV tractor trailer in the direction of the motor carrier. So if you're working or you're trying to get closer to your next destination, you can't use PC for that. PC's personal conveyance, y'all. It's like you're going to get something to eat, going to have a little meal, uh, you know, going to and from a hotel. Personal conveyance. And it doesn't matter if your truck's loaded or not, as long as you're not, you can have the truck loaded as long as you're on personal conveyance if you're using personal things. Number four, time spent driving a passenger carrying CMV while passengers are not on board. Off-duty drivers are not considered passengers when traveling to a common destination of their own choice with the scope of the guidance. Number five, time spent transporting a CMV to the facility to have vehicle maintenance performed. Number six, after being placed out of service for exceeding the maximum period permitted under part 395, time spent driving to a location to attain required rest less directed by enforcement officer at the scene. Number seven, 
Time spent traveling to a motor carrier's terminal after loading or unloaded for a shipper or receiver. Number eight, time spent operating a motor coach when luggage is stowed. The passengers have been disbarked and the driver has been directed to deliver the luggage. So PC can be a good thing to use. I've used it. I've been sitting somewhere and I've been in my break and I'm like, oh man, I've got to use the bathroom. There's nowhere to go. I've only been asleep seven hours, but I had to get somewhere. So I unhooked my trailer. You can unhook the trailer and I'll hook your trailer, but I bobtailed over to a nearest place that take me a number two, you know what I'm saying? Come right back to where I started from. Boom. Go back up to my trailer, went back off duty, and it will continue your 10 hour break. It does not mess it up. It keeps it going. So there is times for personal conveyance that you can use. Other day, for example, I was in Michigan. I was stuck there all day. I used PC. I went over and watched me a movie. Left there and went to Chili's. Went there, went to another town, got my hair cut. Then came back to the truck. Never messed my 34-hour breakup because I used personal conveyance. But if I'm on my way to Miami and I'm 100 miles away, I can't just keep driving to get somewhere when I run out of hours under personal conveyance. If you run out of hours, don't use personal conveyance. You just have to go over if there's nowhere to be parked. You go here and you run out of time. And this place is full. This place is full. And you're like, oh no, you ain't got to pull on the side of the road. The law states that you go to the next safe haven, but you'd have to prove that you didn't pass three other places up the road. They had to be a long distance with nothing. So I always stop an hour or so before I run out of time. I don't run out of time. I've gotten really close. I run out of time just now, but I'm in a dock. Now legally, I can use PC to leave from a dock if I'm going to a resting place. There's some uh, questions and answers here on the site. Let's go over those uh, frequent asked questions and answers, and maybe that'll help you out too. Check it out. All right, it says, may a driver who drops his or her last load at a receiver facility use personal advance to return to their normal work location, i.e. home or terminal? The answer is no. Returning home or to the terminal for a dispatch trip is a continuation of the trip and therefore cannot be considered personal conveyance. Now, let's say I drop at my terminal and my house is right up the road and I'm gonna go home. I can use personal advance to go home if I'm turning around and coming right back to the same location that I started it from. But you can't further yourself and get yourself positioned into the next pickup, if that makes sense. Number two, the guidance allows for authorized use of CMV to travel home after work at an offsite location. What is it meant by the term offsite and when used in this context? The term refers to a location other than a carrier's terminal or a shipper or receiver facility where a driver works for a temporary period for a particular job. Specifically, the term is intended for our construction and utility companies that set up base camps near a major job, operate there for days or weeks at a time. These remote locations are considered offsite locations, therefore travel between home and that offset location is considered commuting time and qualifies as personal conveyance. All right, number three. Is personal conveyance treated any different when the driver is hauling hazardous material? No, there's no restriction on personal conveyance regarding hazardous material. Transportation provided that the driver complies with the provisions of 49 CFR parts 177 and 397. Question number four, can a driver who claims the short haul exception use personal conveyance? Yes, there is no connection between personal conveyance and the short haul exception. As always, off-duty time does not extend the 12-hour duty limitation. Number five, how is personal conveyance time calculated in the hours of service rules? It's simple. Time spent under personal conveyance is off-duty time. Number six, may a driver use personal conveyance when they run out available driving on duty hours? No. Remember, I said there's an exception. Except for the one exception described in the guidelines where a driver who runs out of hours while at the ship or receiver facility may drive from that facility to a nearby safe location to park, provided that she that the driver allows adequate time to obtain rest in accordance with the daily minimum off-duty periods under the hours of service rules before beginning the drive. Personal advance is those times where a driver is operating solely for non-business purposes and cannot use to extend the day duty day. All right, number seven. Are there maximum distance times and distance limits for the use of personal advance? No. However, it's important to note that the provision of 392.3 of the FMCRS prohibiting the operation of a commercial motor vehicle while fatigue continues to apply, to apply. Therefore, a driver must get adequate at rest before returning to driving. All right, number eight. If a driver picks up a commercial motor vehicle from a repair facility once repairs are complete, would the driver be allowed to use personal advance to residence from the repair shop? 
No. Travel for repair and maintenance work is being done in the furtherance of the business and a considered on-duty time. Number nine, can a loaded vehicle be used as personal conveyance? Yes, the term in personal conveyance is based on the nature of the movement, not whether the vehicle is loaded. Or they said laden, but they're not loaded. Number 10, can personal conveyance time be combined with other off-duty time to complete a 10, 34-hour break? Yes, like I said, I just did that. Since PC is off-duty time, however, it's important to note that the provision in 30, 30, 392.3 of the FMCRS prohibiting the operation of the commercial vehicle while ill fatigue continues to apply. I know it can be fusing, confusing, so I hope that helped you out. If it did, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try to teach you things that the CDL school will not teach you. Hope that helped you out. After you get done with this, go to my channel, and there's a lot more videos on mountain driving, rain driving, driving fatigue, all kinds of different things. So check them out. But make sure you subscribe right now. This is Truck Life with Sean. Let's get it.